Hey everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk tonight about middleman. And um, so obviously the first question is, what's middleman? Um, the tagline, according to you know their website, is making developing websites simple. And uh, that is true. Uh, it's not Rails. Uh, it's basically a static gener uh, site generator. So it should really say makes developing static websites simple. Although there is a little bit of kind of dynamic stuff that you can do as well. Um, so I've got no slides tonight. It's just going to be the web browser, me, terminal, and sublime text. So we're going to give it a and the middleman and a couple of gems and we'll we'll give it a go. The middleman's going to hack your shit up. Exactly. There you go. So why middleman? Well, over the holidays I wanted to I decided it's time to put a personal website up again, which is something I haven't had for many years. Um, some of that was actually partially due to some inspiration from Julio actually. So, and he's like, yeah, get writing, put thoughts down on paper and whatever. So, thanks. Hat tip to Julio. And I was kind of looking around and of course the first thing that usually comes to mind is you're going to do some kind of a, you know, a blog or a personal site is, uh, and if you're a dev, if you're a Ruby dev, it's usually Jekyll. And I kind of had a look at Jekyll and I had a look at um, some of the add-ons like Jekyll Bootstrap and I had a look at Octopress and I came to two conclusions. One, uh, they look too complicated. Um, Jekyll, uh, Octopress uses um, Liquid and um, it just seemed like it was a bit of a mission to just do a couple of simple things. Um, I wasn't r really happy also about the fact that uh, all of like the Octopress add-ins and some of them were really cool, you know, like syntax highlighting and um, I don't know, he's, he's got about 15 or 16 add-ons, but they're not, they're not in gems. So it's kind of like you're pulling out the whole sort of Octopress repo and then customizing it and then that's it. You kind of, you know, if, if updates are made to Octopress, you're kind of then pulling from that into your repo and whatever. And I didn't really like that idea. Jekyll at the moment, although just after I put all my stuff together, um, is it, who's the dude from GitHub who does Jekyll? Um, Tom Preston Warner said that he would be recommitting to the project, but it's effectively been a ghetto for the last few months. Anyway, started using middleman. I had tried middleman probably about a year or so ago when it was on version 2 and version 3 recently came out and version 3 was is, is really really awesome so um, middleman's got some you know pretty awesome features right out the box um, you know it's got support for example for the asset pipeline um, it's got support for uh, so-called pretty URLs it's got support for things like live reload so um, I'll basically show you how all of that works. Okay, so the first thing you would do is if you were um, setting up a middleman site is you just do a middleman init in the directory and it basically creates a structure for you. So I'm not going to do that now, but effectively you're left with a couple of files. You've got a, uh, your gem file. And um, I've got a few extensions in here. Um, you know, there's the blogging extension, the syntax highlighting, and, and integration with Live Reload. Builder for doing your RSS feeds. Red Carpet for doing Markdown. So, um, in terms of my requirements, what I wanted was something that was Git-based. So, I wanted something that was Markdown-based. I wanted something that could be deployed very, very easily. And... Um, I'll sort of take you through each of those as we go along. So the first thing is, it comes with a pretty standard config file. So um, the first thing you say is, well, you know, what markdown engine do you want? And you can choose Red Carpet, you can choose uh, R Discount or Maruku or even Red Cloth, you know, if you want to go back that far. Um, 
I chose red carpet because it's got the sort of GitHub style fenced code blocks. It's got Smarty Pants support, so you get nice curly, uh, you know, inverted commas and things. Uh, I'm a Haml person, so I wanted to be able to use Haml, and that's actually also been a problem with Jekyll, so Haml's cool. Um, I also use SAS, so, you know, wanted SAS as well. Um, some config things, some layouts, and basically then your blog extension. So we'll, I'll show you how that works. So if we have a look at through some of the, if we have a look through some of the files, then we'll come back to the config. Um, you basically just create a file. So for example, um, you want to create, um, so this is the, the front page. Um, you just create a file, and in this case, I'm using Haml. So just put the file into the source directory and give it some uh, front matter, so which is effectively just YAML. Uh, so just using the default layout, which I have probably could have left that out because it's um, it is the default, the, the title, and there's a parameter called pageable, which we're using on the blog summary. And uh, let's go and have a look and see what that looks like. So. Um, I'm actually running the middleman server. I probably just cleared the, the window, but effectively middleman just starts up. It uses a, a normal rack app. And um, if we now go to localhost, um, there it is. That's what's served. Now, I haven't put any blog posts in here, but I have put together a very basic site structure so with some layout. So there's a title for the site sort of a subtitle, um, a list of posts. Uh, there's a footer, which appears on every page. Um, potentially, um, a list of talks. Um, and, you know, an about page, which has some, some text in it. So, if we go and look at each of those pages, uh, I'll come back to the index page in a second. The talks page. So, let's just have a look at the about page. So, that's basically just... Um, this happens to be Hamel, so uh, if you wanted, you know, you could just put good old Hamel in here and you can do that. And being Hamel, you can actually do um, markdown and you should be able to do that. And if we refresh, uh, there it is and, you know, the bold came up because it's markdown. And <clears throat> I've got the live reload extension running here. So if I leave this page open and I go back, I would normally have the two side by side. We're working on a smaller screen. Um, so I'll put some more lorem ipsum, save it, and the page just refreshed. So you can work in live reload while you're busy. Um, so you can work in your browser. You don't have to... You know, Sorry, you can work in your editor, and then when you go to the browser, you'll see the changes straight away. So if we go to the style sheet, for example, there's a very simple style going here, and I just say, all right, font family, you know, and we want to change this to... Um, <laughs> I don't have it. Isn't there a open one? <laughs> anyway, put Times New Roman, it, it automatically won't change much, but you know, if I change the font size, it changes. So it's pretty cool for designing in, in this kind of dynamic environment. You can, if you want to create a new page, so let's go and create a new page. Um, go to source, we say new file, and we will say hello, and we'll make this a full markdown file. And um, we'll give a title, um, welcome to Roro, and let's go and get some, some good copy. So if you're into Riker, there we go, and paste it in, and... Hello. There we go. 
So pretty easy to, to set up and do. Um, there's a couple of layouts that are being used. So there's a default layout, which um, there's kind of a master layout file, which just, you know, has the navigation, the head of the footer. Um, and then you can have separate layouts. So there's a layout for the blog, uh, and there's a kind of a default layout for each of your, your sort of static pages. So let's go and let's say you want to create a post. So blog post under posts, it's currently empty because there are no posts. And um, <clears throat> let's just change tabs and you do a middleman. So we just go middleman help. You can see all the commands and we do middleman article and um, I don't know, what are we going to say? Sydney is awesome in summer. Okay. So it basically has now created in the post directory uh, in the right format with the date, uh, with the sort of URL friendly slug. Uh, and you'll notice it's got .erb .md. And I've configured it that way. So um, let's just open. Should it be what? Sorry? No, I actually want the markdown to go to HTML first to then go with the rest of the HTML that's with the ERB and then. Yeah, because it yeah. processes it right to left. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, um, it's got the right format and effectively in the config. There's the, what the source looks like, that's what the permalink looks like, and you can change, you know, those placeholders as you want. Uh, you can have the separator, and there's the default extension, erb.md. So let's give that a go, and maybe, um, I really love, this is why I do the, okay. And let's see what happens if we, it's already refreshed in the background because we've got live reload running and you can go in and there you see the blog post. And if you, you know, you go to the feed, you get it as well. So feed.xml and there it is. So it's pretty cool. Now, of course, this is all running in, um, you know, in your browser and it's running like a normal app would and you might want to then deploy this somewhere for, um, you, know, for you know, to host it. And typically you want to host this thing just as HTML files. You don't really, you know, the idea here is that you just generate a static site. So it's pretty easy. Um, middleman, middleman build and um, we can go clean so that it will just make sure that you know, any old files will get deleted, and that's it. So it's created pretty much the entire directory structure. Um, so we go um, CD build, and everything is there and ready to upload to, uh, in my case, I'm using S3, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, there's a few things. Um, Every page has ended up actually being a folder with, uh, or a directory with index.html. So uh, that basically gives you these nice looking URLs. All you need to do on your web server is just say index.html is your, uh, you know, your main document. So that's the first thing. Um, second thing is you'll notice that the style has a kind of an asset tag next to it. So middleman has been designed to work well with, um, you know, if, if you, your, your pages are cached and effectively by adding, you know, your suffix, you kind of get cache busting for free. Um, the other thing is if you're going to host, you know, and you want to use, let's say, a... Um, uh, CDN, like CloudFront, whatever the case is, um, in the config, so let's go back to the config, um, 
So there, I've said activate the asset host and just tell it it must go to you know whatever your URL is. So what happens then is uh, if we have a quick look at the build folder, well we've got it in here actually, um, and we just go to one of these files, um, you'll see that the link to the CSS uh, and any links to images, for example, will have the CDN host prepended, which is pretty cool. Uh, right, what else? So the other thing is, depending on how you arrange your files, um, middleman creates a sitemap based on your directory structure. So if we look at the actual middleman website, uh, you can see that they have... Uh, quite a sophisticated um, sort of or good set of documentation and you know you've got getting started templates template helpers dynamic pages asset pipeline you know all of this stuff and this table of contents for example is completely generated on the fly and I've done that for this little example um, so the blogging extension is used to create um, you know these articles but I also wanted one for example that just lists a couple of talks so he has two different talks and if we go into the talks folder you can actually see that there's two talks with markdown in them so in the front matter it's got the title and the date um, and same thing there and all I've so what happens is middleman uh, recurses through the directory structure, puts a sitemap together, and then to get, for example, the little summary page at the front, um, if we go to talks, and um, we just, you can, can everybody see that? Is that better? Um, so you just get current page, which is the talks page. Underneath it, it's children. Um, I've added some metadata, which is the date. Um, so it just parses a Ruby date, uh, then goes through each one in reverse order and puts a um, you know, time tag with the time and date and a link with the right classes and so on. And that gives me this thing. So that's pretty cool. So if you're doing documentation sites and you want kind of a table of contents or you want sort of some kind of a front page to present everything uh, you can do that which is pretty cool um, okay so if we go back to the config um, so the directory indexes were you know the slash index.html if I take that out the links will just have .html in them um, you can configure the build, so here I'm saying only do the asset hash on CSS. What I should have done is on, you know, image files, for example. And, of course, you know, our good old friend, the GIF, or Adam GIFs. Um, you can say, you know, you want compressed SAS, for example. So, um, you know, we go into the build and you get, you know, it's, it's nicely compressed, you know, as you'd get with kind of the Rails asset pipeline. Um, the other thing is you've got helpers, which is pretty cool. So, um, in this case, you know, if you want an image with a caption, um, if I go and plonk just this inside some ERB tags in, let's go to one of those, um, I mean, we can do it in one of the posts. Uh, no, I'm going to the wrong place. Uh, or let's just put in the hello one. Remember, we're doing markdown with ERB. So if I just put this, put an ERB tag in there, and say I want image with... So this is an image. And... Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, what did you suggest? Placekitten.com. 
So we should be good. And let's go and have a look at hello. So, um, and it didn't work. <laughs> That particular file was just MD, not MD, not yeah, Airbnb, not Airbnb, not MD, whatever. It really shouldn't be the other way around. It, it, let's try it. There you go. And it's got the little caption in it. So what it basically means is, you know, you can, you can intersperse uh, your, you know, some nice little helpers and so on. And of course, if we want some Ruby in there, we just use good old GitHub kind of stuff, and we say def uh, I am a method and and puts hello, and we should hopefully, yay, there's some nice syntax highlighted uh, Ruby for you. Um, so a little known thing is that uh, Amazon S3 can now host static sites, which has been able to for about a year. So hopefully it'll come up. You but can in the uh, root, well. you can. There's one caveat though, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so there's the site that I'm setting up. And Effectively, it's just a bucket, and all you need to do is just name your bucket by the URL that you potentially want to use. Um, it then, you go static website hosting, you say enable it, index, document, which, you know, that nice directory thing that I showed will always, um, so it'll always just call index.html if you don't provide a document name. Um, and that's it. That's the end point. So we actually... So in some ways someone can break you by getting your bucket name first. Does that mean, sorry, what? Someone could register your bucket name first and start using this approach? No, not necessarily because all that is, um, it's just a, it's just creation of an alias. I mean, if you want to call it whatever you want to call oh, it, so you know. Yeah. yeah, so... All you do is, um, sorry, we lost the thing, but um, so the URL that they've given me looks like that www.stevenringer.com.s3 website dash us east one amazon aws.com. And I just C name that. Yeah. Now, the new thing, so this has been a, a available for about a year or so, the new thing, but you have to be using route 53 which is Amazon's DNS, because they have a new type of record called an alias. And an alias is kind of like dynamic A record in the background. So if you want to point to just yourdomain.com, not www.yourdomain.com, um, uh, root 53 will do that for you, and you just effectively set up another bucket and say redirect all requests to this to the other host. You choose that and then just say redirect them that way. Won't really go into that now, but if anybody wants to know about that, you know, I'll probably put up a blog post for it. And so this this is what I sort of um, I just tested a deployment yesterday with some a um, little bit of code, and you know, in here, for example, you can see that my CSS and my JavaScript is coming from my from CloudFront, for example. If it's all static, why wouldn't it work from CloudFront? You can. Absolutely, you can. Um, you just point CloudFront to the root. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you just then have to create the alias in your domain that points to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's some other pretty cool little add-ons um, that you can get for middleman. A lot of uh, templates like Twitter Bootstrap with middleman sort of all integrated for you so you can just start using it. Um, there's the live reload thing which you've seen. Um, I think that's probably... It. Just have a look at their site. You know, there's 
there's a shitload of stuff that you can do with it. Um, and yeah, it, it really makes life just very, very easy when it comes to um, creating a site. And there is actually a plugin to deploy, there's one to deploy to GitHub pages. So, which is actually pretty easy anyway, but you know, it's already, somebody's already done it and somebody's also already put, made a plugin to deploy to S3. So again, once you kind of finished, you just say publish or rake publish or something, middleman publish and it's all done. So that's the middleman. Questions? Yeah.